Welcome to section 9 of viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing human papillomavirus, or HPV, which you can see right here. This scene will take place in a garden. You can see the owner of the garden taking a break and drinking some Pepsi off to the right. Pepsi sounds like papilloma, so it will be our symbol for human papillomavirus. The blue colors in the image should help you remember that this is a DNA virus. To go along with this garden theme, notice that we've added some grape vines to the image. The vines wrap around this greenhouse in a circular shape, which is to help you remember that HPV has a circular genome. Notice that there's not just one vine that wraps around the greenhouse, but two, and that they run parallel to one another. This is to help you remember that the circular genome is double-stranded. Next, notice that we've shown this woman's naked baby enjoying some garden fun as well. She appears a bit distracted with the Pepsi, or else she probably wouldn't be letting her child eat these ladybugs. In any case, the naked baby is here to help you remember that HPV is a naked virus. Now you can see the hard work of this woman paying off. She has neatly organized her rows and has successfully grown some cauliflower. The rows represent serotypes, and the cauliflower looks kind of like a wart. So it will be our symbol for the warts associated with HPV. Going from left to right, you can see that the first row only has one cauliflower plant in it. The fact that it comes first and only has one plant in it should help you remember that this row represents serotype 1. The second row represents serotype 2 for the same reasons. And the third row has six cauliflower plants in it, so it represents serotype 6. Finally, the fourth row has two tall plants right next to each other which looks kind of like the number 11. So this row represents serotype 11. So again, from left to right, we have serotypes 1, 2, 6, and 11. Because there are cauliflower plants in each of these rows, including little mini cauliflower plants growing on the two tall stalks right here, we can conclude that each of these serotypes are associated with warts. Now notice that we've shown some car keys on the ground near the fifth row. Most people begin to drive at the age of 16, so we've included these keys in this row to represent serotype 16. Also notice that the woman drinking the Pepsi has an I voted sticker on her leg, and that she's standing in the row furthest to the right. People in the United States are allowed to vote at the age of 18, so this sticker will be our symbol for the number 18, which should help you remember that this row represents serotype 18. Finally, this woman has a cancer hope ribbon near her crotch, which should help you remember that serotype 16 and 18 are associated with anal and cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is especially important to remember because this is super common and is frequently screened for by performing pap smears. All right, now let's take a step back and discuss each serotype in a bit more detail going from left to right. So now notice that we've shown a guy in the first two rows who appears to be picking the cauliflower. He's barefooted and has his hands and feet very close to the warty looking vegetables, which should help you remember that serotypes one and two are associated with veruque or warts on the hands and feet. Again, because he's shown in the first and second rows of the garden, this should help you remember that it's associated with serotypes one and two. This is an image of plantar warts. As you can see, they're on the bottom of this patient's foot, and over time, they can become quite painful. Next, notice that we've shown some cucumbers in the garden next to the rows that represent serotypes six and 11. The word cucumber sounds like acuminatum, which should help you remember that serotypes six and 11 are associated with condyloma acuminatum. This is a fancy medical term for the anal genital warts caused by HPV. This is an image of anal warts. As you can see, these warts resemble cauliflower, and when they occur in the anal or genital region, they're referred to as condyloma acuminata. You may have also noticed that the baby is eating some ladybugs. As he chews them up, they go towards the back of his mouth near the larynx, and this should help you remember that HPV can cause warts on the larynx. Notice that we've strategically placed the baby near the two rows that represent serotypes 6 and 11. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that serotypes 6 and 11 can cause laryngeal papillomas. Now we've added the woman's partner to the image. His arm can be a bit hard to see, so let's zoom up. As you can see, he has a tattoo of the infamous car race known as the Indy 500. The Indy 500 should help you remember a CD4 count of 500. Also notice that he has a band-aid right below the car, which should make you think of HIV or AIDS. Finally, he's right next to his wife, who has that cancer hope ribbon symbol right next to her crotch, which should make you think of anal and cervical cancer. So putting all of these ideas together should help you remember that HIV patients have an increased risk of anal and cervical cancer when the CD4 count drops below 500. Now let's turn our attention to the straw that this woman is drinking with. As you can see, it's shaped kind of like a seven. And this is here to help you remember that certain strains of HPV, like serotypes 16 and 18, produce a protein known as E7, 
which is associated with cancer. If we zoom back out, you can see that now we've added a six pack of Pepsi to the image. The six pack should make you think of the other protein associated with cancer, which is E6. So serotypes 16 and 18 produce a protein known as E6, which is associated with cancer. This is a figure which shows how HPV can cause cancer. Recall from molecular biology that G1 and S are phases of the cell cycle, and transition from the G1 phase to the S phase is an important regulatory point. Once the cell passes this point, it can undergo DNA synthesis followed by cellular division. Therefore, if this process goes unchecked, then you can see how a cell would become neoplastic, resulting in cancer. And this is exactly what HPV can do to cells. So from the image, notice that when there is DNA damage, P53 and RB normally stop the G1 to S phase transition. However, if the same cell is infected by certain strains of HPV that produce E6 and E7, then P53 and RB are unable to stop the transition and the cell continues to grow and divide despite DNA damage, which ultimately leads to cancer. So again, in the presence of damage, P53 and RB normally inhibit the transition from G1 to S, which is indicated by the inhibitory arrows right here. However, in the presence of E6 and E7, P53 and RB are unable to perform their normal function. So this results in unregulated DNA synthesis and division, which leads to cancer. All right, if we return to the image, you can see that we've added a bunch of tomatoes on the ground, and these are a bit rotten appearing. If you look closely at them, you can see big brown spots that resemble enlarged nuclei of a cell. So these will be our symbol for the cellular changes that may be seen in HPV which are known as coilocytic changes. Notice that we've shown these tomatoes in the rows that represent serotypes 6, 11, 16, and 18. So putting all this together should help you remember that coilocytes may be seen in patients with an HPV infection from serotypes 6, 11, 16, or 18. This is an image showing some cells taken from a pap smear. The left is normal and the right shows coilocytes. Notice that the nuclei are enlarged and hyperchromatic. Okay, the last addition to this image is the sign that's shaped like a syringe, which is our symbol for a vaccine. Notice that it says best cauliflower varieties and it's pointing towards the right side, towards the last four rows. This means that the vaccine is specific to serotypes 6, 11, 16, and 18. The vaccine is known as Gardasil, which should hopefully be easy to remember, considering that this is taking place in a garden, which sounds like Gardasil. So the Gardasil vaccine can prevent infection from serotypes 6, 11, 16, and 18. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A five-year-old boy is brought to the physician due to shortness of breath and wheezing that began 20 minutes ago. Physical examination is significant for nasal flaring and subcostal retractions. Laryngoscopy reveals a benign laryngeal tumor occluding the airway. The tumor is excised and a pathological report states that the histological changes were caused by a virus. Which of the following is most likely responsible for this patient's condition? A, RNA virus, single-stranded positive sense. B, RNA virus, single-stranded negative sense. C, DNA virus, double-stranded non-enveloped. D, DNA virus, double-stranded enveloped. Or E, DNA virus, single-stranded non-enveloped. Okay, hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has a laryngeal papilloma, resulting in a compromised airway. We can deduce this based upon the shortness of breath, wheezing, and a benign laryngeal tumor occluding the airway. The question stem also states that the changes were caused by a virus, making HPV most likely. Therefore, the correct answer is C. It's a DNA virus, double-stranded, and non-enveloped. From the image, recall that the blue colors should help you remember that HPV is a DNA virus. The vines in parallel with one another, right here, should help you remember that it's double-stranded. And the naked baby over here should help you remember that it's a naked or non-enveloped virus. The baby is also eating ladybugs, which should help you remember that serotypes 6 and 11 can cause laryngeal papillomas. A and B are incorrect. These answer choices are a reference to most RNA viruses, which are single-stranded and either positive or negative sense. But a laryngeal papilloma in a child is a unique finding to HPV, which is a DNA virus. So A and B are incorrect. D is a reference to most DNA viruses, which are double-stranded, and many are also enveloped, such as HSV and pox viruses. But again, these are not associated with laryngeal papillomas, so D is incorrect. E is a reference to parvovirus, which is the only DNA virus that's single-stranded. This typically causes a rash on the cheeks and trunk, but is not associated with laryngeal papillomas, so E is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is C, DNA virus, double-stranded, non-enveloped. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know regarding HPV.